presentation of this Viewfinder episode is locally supported by UC Davis Health System. Former NFL player George Visker has a story to tell. It's very personal. It starts with why he's working and living in this office. So this is it, this is my closet. <laughs> you know, I've got my some of my files and the rest, this is it. I kind of just moved into this and then on top of that, you know, we lost the house. Been here for the last couple months, probably at least, maybe longer, actually longer than that. If all of this seems confusing to you, imagine what it feels like for George. He suffered a series of concussions more than 30 years ago, which damaged the memory sensors of his brain. Now, this former defensive tackle for the San Francisco 49ers is forced to store everything, his life and all his memories, in these little yellow notebooks. You know, I have 28 years of these right and rain notebooks. And I brought up the last, oh, I don't know, probably a couple years here or whatever, but someone got mixed up. Okay, this, this goes from March 25th to April 3rd, and then each day, you know, I'll write like the hot spots, what I had going on on the 27th. This whole issue has had probably a bigger effect on his life than probably anybody that's played in the NFL. As a kid, Visker loved football. Like many of his friends from Stockton, California, he dreamed of one day playing in the National Football League. After years of practice, sacrifice, and exhausting workouts, he made it. George was drafted by the New York Jets and then played one year with the San Francisco 49ers. His brief NFL career came to an unexpected end Sunday, October 12, 1980. I don't remember the hit at all. I don't remember the game at all. The 49ers suffered a blowout loss to the Dallas Cowboys. The final score, 59 to 14. In what looked like a routine play, Visker suffered a devastating hit. First play I'm in, I get ear hold on a Dallas tight end trap, uh, major concussion. They kept me in the game. They, afterwards, later on in the week, when I could remember things, the trainers, you know, laughingly told me that I went through 20 or 25 smelling salts. I had brain surgery September of 81. And I remember it was September because I, I turned 23 in the hospital. I'm not even out of intensive care, 14 days in intensive care. The trainers and doctors are calling me, telling me they're gonna make a special made helmet so I can keep playing. Um, they'll do anything to play. I mean, that's just the culture of the game. From that single play, Visker's life changed forever. Four months after the Super Bowl, I had two more brain surgeries, 10 hours apart. I'm given last rights, and I have creditors on me for years. I had to take the 49ers to court and sue just for workers' comp, just to get my hospital bills paid. Now I'm on my ninth brain surgery. I ultimately, from concussions, I developed hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain. So basically, they, they drilled a hole in my skull, and they've actually moved it three times. So I have four different holes, they've moved it around. There's a tube goes in the middle of my brain, and it ends right in one of the ventricles. The infamous brain drain kit. I guarantee I'm the only human being on earth that has one of these. A concussion or mild traumatic brain injury is caused by a sudden blow to the brain or body. It triggers headaches, dizziness, vomiting, vision problems, sleeplessness, and memory loss. Today, Visker suffers from many of these side effects including mood swings and seizures. 
This is the only life I've ever known. Um, I don't know what it's like to people get up in the morning and they know what they're doing for the day or next week or, I mean, if it's not written down for me, it doesn't exist. All right. Blast off. Visker spends several hours a week inside this hyperbaric chamber where oxygen flows directly to his brain. My microcognitive memory scores now have improved over 15% since I started. I mean, I'm not out of the woods as they tell me, but uh, you know, I'm showing great improvement across the board. No one's trying to kill a game of football. It's a great game, but I have to steal Steve Young's um, quote or line, official concussions. No one ever told me I had a concussion. Former Dallas Cowboys player Doug Cosby was a star football player in the 80s. Cosby is a friend of Visker and now coaches football at Sacramento High School. You, you try to make kids you know, aware of uh, you know, the, the dangers that are um, part of the game. Like when George and I played and, and, and people before this generation, the only thing anyone ever told you playing was don't put your head down when you hit because you'll break your neck. No one ever said, you know, don't try to keep your head out of there because you might get a concussion. They told they you were taught to hit with this part of your head. Why is it that in boxing decades ago, if a guy was concussed, knocked out, you didn't box for months. How is it that the NFL didn't realize about that? You know, the human brain wasn't meant to be used as a, as a weapon. Somehow football has evolved into, the, the brain is used as, that's your most potent weapon. This former NFL player is on a concussion crusade. Visker travels the country, sharing his personal story and trying to save lives. I've been very vocal about what's going on over the years. A lawsuit was filed by players, and it's, it's a class action lawsuit. It's been growing and growing and growing to the point where there's more than 4,000 or about 4,000 plaintiffs at this, at this point, and they are alleging that the NFL uh, knew about this link between head trauma and these diseases later in life, like dementia, uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, you know, e even depression. Some of these men had um, uh, studies done of their brains, and uh, the brain showed real trauma that they had been affected uh, dramatically by uh, their playing career, especially all the concussions, all the head trauma. On August 29th, 2013, a $765 million settlement was reached between the NFL and the 4,500 plaintiffs in the class action lawsuit. The settlement is not considered an admission by the NFL of liability or an admission that the injuries were caused by football. Tonight is the homecoming football game at Del Oro High School in Loomis, California. It's kind of hard seeing all the guys that I played with my freshman year go up to varsity and play, and I just kind of sit there and watch from the sideline. You know, being in the crowd and hanging out with like the friends that, your friends that don't play is definitely not even half as cool as it would be to be on the field. You know, getting your name called on a loudspeaker. Colby Butcher suffered several concussions while playing rugby in junior high and football during his freshman year. I didn't actually know my head was messed up until the end of my freshman football season. Like all the way through, like, yeah, I get headaches every once in a while, but I just think, you know, maybe I just didn't hydrate enough, you know, whatever. That's what everyone told me, so that's why I, you know, went along with and believed. And nobody knew what was wrong with me either. They were kind of just like, well, you know, maybe he's just, you know, getting lazy. But up until that, I had like a 95 in all my classes. And then from that point on, just Fs on everything. All my math tests just failed. Everything just went downhill. A lot of times kids complain pretty quickly that they feel foggy. That seems to be one of the really common things. They may have difficulty concentrating, especially in a classroom with a lot of noise and distraction. Uh, they may find that it's a lot harder for them on tests. I've got some 
kids with straight A's or you know above a 3.5 GPA and all of a sudden they're having difficulty remembering information. Like Visker, remembering is a struggle for Colby. But he's only 16 years old. We had been to several different doctors, close to about six or seven actually, and they had all cleared me. For years, Colby knew something was wrong. He just didn't know what it was or how it happened until his mother discovered baseline testing. Baseline testing is nothing new. It's been done for decades. The whole point of a baseline test is you measure a person when they're fully healthy, before a sports season starts. You get an idea what's normal, what's not normal for them. And then when they get a concussion, when you measure them again, you could tell how much the concussion has bothered them using some very, very objective means. Finally, my mom went to the fall sports night and she was sitting there waiting for, you know, maybe someone would talk about concussions or whatever. And uh, Dr. Tanji came up and said, hey, you know, this is the new baseline testing. This is what we're doing. Sure enough, we went in and he put a complete pause on everything I was doing. He didn't say I'm going to die, but he was like, look, you're seriously hurt. Like you could honestly injure yourself to the point where you could possibly be paralyzed if you do anything worse. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Colby regularly visits Dr. Jeffrey Tanji, the Associate Medical Director of Sports Medicine for UC Davis. So catch me up, how are you feeling? Uh, getting better, mm -hmm. slowly. You know, the weather changes, it's not as hot anymore, but yeah, you still get the same headaches every day and just kind of hang out. On this visit, Colby was hopeful Dr. Tanji would clear him to play football. It didn't happen. But if you're still having a headache, it's like, we're not going to clear you for competition or anything like that. Memory loss is a big aspect. You know, we used to say that concussion was more serious if you had actual loss of consciousness or you were knocked out. These days, that occurs in only 10 to 20 percent of concussions, but a serious marker is how much memory you've lost during the concussion. The more you've lost of the memory, the more severe the concussion. If I read one page, flip it over, unless I read it seven, eight, ten times, flip it over, I'll maybe catch like quarter of the stuff that's in. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Tanji yeah. said right at the beginning that it isn't a quick fix, which I thought it would be after meeting with several doctors. It's a time, it's, it's a process, it's understanding. It's hard when he's a teenager because I thought the things he were doing was just normal, which a lot of times they are, but the mood swings, the um, lack of concentration. With each concussion you get worse than the last one. So every time you bump your head and you've been concussed, it's, it's worse and it continually escalates. And those are some of the things that we didn't know and I don't think the coaches know and some of the doctors don't know when they send the kid back and, and tell him he's ready to go back in a week or two after he's been concussed. Tell you you're fine or like that you're acting fine, but you're the only one that really knows how you feel. I thought I was fine, got hurt, look where I'm at today. Nothing, I have nothing. No football careers, no rugby careers, none of that stuff. And there's literally like 100% chance I'm never gonna be able to play again. So definitely help yourself, you're your own advocate, you know, you're the only one that can tell. It's no secret that playing football is the number one at-risk sport for head injuries or concussions. Believe it or not, the number two, girls soccer. Jess can't play soccer. She got, just did a simple little uh, header. I just remember that I was going to get the ball and I got a high kick to the other side of my temple and I was knocked out and I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think it was a concussion or anything and I kept saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. She just didn't look right. She wasn't running as hard as she normally could, overtired, looked just, looked out of it. And she was like looking around, it was moment it was just briefly, but she, you could tell she was a little disoriented. And he pulled her from the game, and he's like, that's it. When Steve retired me, it was really hard because I thought I was completely fine. I thought everyone was kind of overreacting. I was like, got mad that I couldn't play, and I just didn't want to believe everything that people were telling me. 
as a coach, it's hard because she, she contributed on the field. She was a starting player to then have a player that can contribute. Sorry, you can't, you can't play at all. You can't even train. You have to just sit on the sideline and, and watch your teammates. I still feel the effects from it, and I don't even want to know what it would be like if I hadn't stopped. It would be much worse. He, he probably saved her life. <laughs> And that sounds kind of probably like I'm embellishing, but I don't think I am. There's too much evidence that suggests otherwise about these kids and their concussions. The science and the studies have shown year after year, an adult brain can recover in seven to 10 days, but an adolescent brain, it can take as much to three to four weeks for the same recovery. We're starting to see more research suggesting that there are some real issues here, long-term issues, chronic issues, that, that these kids are at higher risk for, for long-term problems or for more serious problems than we ever knew before. Are they doing anything with that data, though? Um, I don't know, and so that's what we'll, we'll get more information. because right Mind now, Game is a group of business professionals and doctors who regularly visit schools and community venues, including Sacramento Youth Football. Their goal is to bring awareness about sports concussions and help find ways to reduce them. I approached physicians from UC Davis, from Kaiser Permanente, from Sutter, from Mercy, and so we pulled it together, formed a consortium of doctors that specialize in concussion, and the one common bond that they have is that they really understand that concussion is an issue and they wanted to come out and help the kids. At Kaiser Permanente, we partnered with Wells Fargo Student Insurance. They have a program called Play It Safe, which provides secondary insurance coverage to athletes playing high-risk sports. Good. Not bad. Not bad. Play It Safe program really is a program, a comprehensive program that helps facilitate that safe return to play. So it's the combination of preseason baseline testing, the insurance coverage and the access to the specialty provider. I had a moment when the California Interscholastic Federation had asked me to help and come with a symposium that they were doing on safe return to play. And the physician that was speaking there was talking about concussion. And that's where I learned the term second impact. They suffer a second concussion before the brain's fully recovered from the first one. And that's when we can have such catastrophic and tragic circumstances occur such as death. But you know big thing is is um, you know just education and awareness for parents also. It's unavoidable you, there's gonna be I mean you're gonna get hit in the head you're gonna you're gonna hit things with your head. Um, it's just part of the game but I think the more you can be aware of it and the more you can understand that if, if you if you do have a concussion if you if you do have blurred vision you know, if you're, they used to call your bell rung, those type things, it's not good. You just don't shake it off and go back in the game. As science has gotten better, you realize the severity of what can happen, and ultimately, I think a lot of us got lucky, you know? Um, and if you see the cases of kids that have had that second, second concussion syndrome or second impact, and the severity and what it does to them long term, uh, it's scary. Anything that we can do to make sure, at the end of the day, these are high school kids, that are enjoying, enjoying sport, and most of them aren't going to be professional athletes. So if we can keep them safe and happy and uh, let them live long term and without brain injuries, then that's the best thing that we can do for them. I authored AB 25, uh, which requires school districts to obtain a note from a doctor or a healthcare professional before returning to play if a student athlete suffers a concussion. I authored another bill, AB 1451, which requires high school coaches to get first aid training in concussions. And, you know, when kids play, the closest adults to them at the time of the injury are the coaches. I know today from your neuro exam as well that you're back to baseline, you're reporting no symptoms, and you've been asymptomatic for about a week now. The hardest thing for athletes right now is hearing that they can't go back to their sports. Because for many of this, these kids, this is a huge social outlet, and they're used to playing, you know, competitively. They practice every day. You know, this is their social group. They're at playoffs or games on the weekends, where that's really their, you know, social entity. The 
one sport that is known to have more concussions during practice is actually cheerleading. My freshman year is when I was diagnosed with my first concussion. It was around in the fall and we were practicing for I think a competition. Ready, one, two. You got it! Summer Yo is a flyer on her high school cheerleading squad. We were doing what's called a liberty and it's where you're being held on one foot and this one is up kind of in a like up in this position and the trick something went wrong and I came down and I hit my head but I, I couldn't remember hitting my head. I remember watching on the video that I could you could clearly see my head hit and it like kind of rebounded on the ground and the weird thing was that I couldn't remember it and the, that was um, I remember getting really bad headaches from that. Just watch my finger, and I just want you to follow my finger with your eyes. You only see one finger, no double fingers over there, right? So I follow it over here. The first three tests that I took, I wasn't meeting with the baseline, and it was really frustrating because homecoming was coming up, and I didn't want to be out of homecoming this year because it's kind of like the big, the big game that you look forward to every year, so. So then the fourth time that I took it, I did pass, and I was so happy. It was probably like the best feeling. Timing is everything. The sooner we can get to them, the sooner we can diagnose the problem and see what's wrong, the sooner we can get them back to play. What research has also shown us is that maybe even more importantly, a lot of times they don't report the symptoms because they didn't think the symptoms were bad enough to, to constitute a concussion. People often don't think that homework and socializing requires a lot of cognitive ability, but it does. And when one has a concussion, the approved treatment is rest. Mental rest, cognitive rest, to simply let the brain just relax and take it easy. Oh. It's unclear if Colby will ever again play football or any professional sport. He's a gentle giant and yeah. He doesn't like to be angry, and, and he's a good kid. There's nothing wrong with him. Uh, he's, he's bruised his head, and he'll get over it. He'll live through it. He just knows now he's got to live differently, that's all. But he is clear about his future and finding his new field of dreams. I honestly, like, I like to go to school for ag business or some sort of agricultural science or something like that. I can make a career out of it, because I'm good at it. But, uh, that's where I see myself at down the road, you know, just because I plan on going this way, now I'm going completely opposite, doing something else. As we return to George Visker's story, we find two men coming to grips with that fateful moment more than 30 years ago, and a discovery that finally revealed some answers. I knew Doug was in the area. Back in February, he calls me up. And uh, he says, hey, George, this is, this is Cosby. Uh, I'm working on, a, on a, a movie, Life After Football, and I know you're very vocal and you've been through a lot. So we start talking, you know. And, uh, and I mentioned to him, I said, you know, Cosby, my last major concussion was against you guys, the Cowboys, in 1980. I said, I've never seen the game. So he sends me the DVD. And that night I plug it in. I'm watching. And who drills me in the temple? Cosby. So I call him up. and I. I laughingly told him, I said, hey, Doug, I said, guess who caused my last concussion that caused me nine brain surgeries? And he said, who, Jay Saldi? I said, no, you did. <laughs> and he said, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I teased George that if you, got a, if you got a concussion and got knocked out of the game because of me, you, you're probably lucky it was me because it would have been like a real football player. You might not have got up. George, let me see, so <laughs> Jay hit you here. Your, yours was on this yeah, there's side. There's no mark on this side. No. Oh, right there, there's a big X right there. <laughs> Today, Visker and Cosby try to find a bit of humor over what happened, but they are dead serious about this growing and devastating injury. The rest of the time, I said, I had my knuckles in the dirt, and all I did was just, you know, hit people. Yeah, with your head. Yeah, as, exactly. As you were taught. Yeah, every single play, you know. If you know you've been concussed, I mean, you know. Um, 
And if you know, no matter what level of football you're playing at, um, you need to not go back on the field. You need, to, you need to get some medical attention. The peer pressure and the be tough and all that, you know, that's nonsense. You gotta be smart. If we can get them to do the right thing, the trickle down effect to universities, high schools, peewee teams, uh, battered women's groups, uh, traumatic brain injury recovery groups for hospitals. The trickle-down effect is going to impact everybody. For all of these former athletes, sharing their story isn't easy, but they do it with the hope of helping others. Yeah, you, know, you take you take for granted being able to like walk and remember things and all that stuff. You just think it just comes naturally, but when it gets taken away from you, like it did to me, you'll know. Yeah, it sucks. You know, I've always believed that something good comes out of everything. And this has been my life. This is my obligation. Um, uh, it's something I can't help doing I, because I can do it and I'm good at it. To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit kvie.org. Presentation of this Viewfinder episode is locally supported by UC Davis Health System.